Good morning, everyone. It's uh, Rick from Ozark Living Homestead. It's uh, June the 30th, I think it is. Uh, anyway, it's around 7.30 in the morning. Beautiful, uh, actually, little cool morning. Um, not cold, um, but cool. Uh, it's been very nice con considering what it has been. Uh, the days still get pretty warm. They get up in the 80s. Uh, not real high humidity, but pretty decently. Anyway, uh, I think I've showed this before. This is a uh, part of a C band um, satellite dish, the, the gray part that you see here that goes around here. I think I've showed this before, but anyway. Uh, and you've seen these uh, things on the internet uh, that people are making um, for satellite tracker. I mean, not satellite trackers. Um, oh, geez, uh, solar panel trackers. Uh, and it's basically the same thing. You know, they just kind of copy, which is fine. I mean, you know, just kind of copy what's what's here. But the thing is, I got this one was given to me. I bought a couple of more. And one, as you guys know, um, I set up with the uh, actual satellite, uh, the free TV, over-the-air TV. You know, local stations, of course, no cable channels or anything like that you can't get. But I welded these. Well, I didn't weld. Uh, me and my uh, neighbor welded these on here. And um, then I've got to put the unit struts will go up farther. Because my plan is, I have uh, some 160 watt panels. I've got to get some more. But my plan is to eventually put eight on here. Now, I don't know if it's going to hold eight. It depends on how long the unit struts are. I, I really didn't measure. But there's going to be at least 160 watt, a uh, six of the 160 watt panels on here. Uh, and I actually ordered, um, and I'll do that in a later video um, when I get it set up. But I ordered a. Um, solar tracker uh, and again I don't know nothing about this stuff I'm learning and I watch a lot of YouTube channels and I watch some other things and I've got a couple of forums that I go on um, to learn how to try to set this stuff up uh, I mean I know all the basics and stuff but yeah it's just a little more to it than that but anyway the unit struts like I said you know they're gonna go up and down a couple of them on each side and then There'll be like four across, horizontal there. Uh, and so it should hold 860 watt panels. Again, depending on the length of my panels, uh, and the length of the unit struts and all, I may not end up getting but six. Uh, the weight wise, I'm not too worried about holding it. Uh, this is really heavy, really stout. I mean, it was built to hold these satellite dishes and storms and everything else. And the satellite dishes, uh, the OC band dishes, they're not really heavy anyway. This little mount here actually is heavier than the whole dish itself. Uh, and it's, I went and bought, and, I, and I'll take you out and show you. I went and bought a 10 foot piece of three and a half inch OD Schedule 40 steel pipe. Now, I'm going to put it, I think, about three foot in the ground, or an average of around three foot in the ground. And it'll stick out about seven foot or so out of the ground. Um, and the reason for that is I want it as deep in the ground as I can, and I'm going to concrete it in, because we do get some high winds down in this hollow. I'm in the hollow, and during the winter, we do get some high winds and stuff, and I just don't want it blowing over. Um, and I want it up high enough to where the goats can't jump on it or the grandkids can't climb on it and stuff like that. And But it'll still be easy enough to get it clean. Um, and plus, as you guys know, we have these trees. And it's going to be pointing in the wintertime. It's going to be pointing uh, south, right across through there. That's where it's going to actually be pointing Um and then in the um, summertime, which is now, uh, it's, um, it, it's it's more of an angle. The where it's set is kind of a weird angle. But I watched this over the, oh, jeez, uh, over the winter. 
and the summer to watch which way the sun was going. You know, of course, I could have got a compass out here and done this and done that. But just watching the shadows on the ground, uh, I knew how the sun was traveling in the winter and I knew how it was traveling in the summer uh, compared to where the trees are, the shadows, and everything. Now these trees right here, as you see, I had planned on taking these out anyway eventually, and then I was told that these were persimmon trees. Now, I had never had persimmons to come up here, and I tried them uh, a couple years ago when I first, very first come up here. And they're really good. Uh, but the only problem is I found out later on that these persimmon trees are males. I don't have a single female on the, on the premises. Nowhere on the property I, that I found. So they're doing, doing me no good. Plus the neighbors have plenty of them on their property and they just drop them on the ground. They don't even keep them. But I'm gonna take out these trees because they actually shadow it. Like I said, it's about 7.30 in the morning right now. And if you'll look right here is where I'm going to put this post. Now it starts picking up sun here about 7.30 in the morning. And I want to say it's about 12 noon. It's directly over here. But here's the post. And it's 10 foot. And like I said, schedule 40. But there's a little ridge here and not much of one but this is where it's going to be and of course this coat pin is going to go but it's going to sit right here and it just picks up that sun once it comes over that tree there it blinds you guys but yeah i'm going to put it right here that shed's going to get a moved eventually um, and i gotta do a lot of work on floors falling out of it but I th really think it's worth saving the walls and the roof and everything. It doesn't leak that I can tell. Uh, but it's got quite a bit of work. We're going to move it. And I plan on putting a little, some kind of little shed there. Big, basically a solar shed. Uh, it'll be small. Nothing very big at all. Uh, probably be 8 by 8 Something small enough to keep all the stuff in. Then I can run the electrical lines up to the cabin. And then, of course, as you guys know, there's going to be another gate pin over here once I get all this cleared out and cleaned up and burned. Um, but I'm going to go get the tractor, and I'm going to go ahead and drill a hole here and get this thing sunk three feet in the ground. And uh, so you guys can see it. And now when I get it sunk in the ground and get it concreted in and it's set up, I'm going to put that... that that mount that I showed you over there, I'm gonna put it on top of it and bolt it down. And I'm gonna take, I got a 100 watt panel I'm gonna put up there just temporarily to get it going and uh, so that I can adjust everything with the actuator and everything and with the uh, tracker to make sure it's tracking where I need it to track and it, the limits are set and all that stuff. And uh, I'll show you guys when I actually get that put up there. All right, I'm not going to bore you with this part of it, but I'm going to go get the tractor and uh, get over here and dig this post hole, and uh, then I'll be back.
Well guys, I want to show you something. I just, right at the very, very end, I hit something really hard down there. Probably it was a big rock. You can't see it because I got to clean that with a post hole digger. But, for you guys that don't know anything about this, this right here is a, a bolt. It goes in there and you can see it's actually coming down off the shaft now. Here. And that's where it's, this is supposed to be over here. And there's supposed to be a bolt run through there or either here. I have a, I only have one shear pin in it. It's what they call a shear pin. And it's just a bolt and a nut. And it's a certain grade to where they will break. And what happens is when this thing binds up in the ground, instead of tearing your machinery up, uh, in fact, here's one. If you guys can see it, it's a newer one that I sheared off a while back. Um, you put those things in there so if you hit something or get snagged up on something deep in the ground, instead of tearing up your, your equipment, because uh, th this stuff is not cheap, um, it'll shear those bolts off. And I just, right at the very, very end, this is actually about to drop off here. I gotta be careful and get it out of here, get another bolt put in there. And you always keep those around. And they're called shear pins, well, we call them shear pins, but uh, they're just nuts and bolts. Uh, but you always keep them around because you never know when you're going to shear one of them off. And that, they're there for that reason, not just to hold this bit on, this auger. They're actually there to uh, shear off too. And of course it's sheared off. I saw it when it snapped. Um, so anyway guys, uh, I'm not going to bore you with pouring concrete, mixing concrete and pouring concrete because I'm sure you guys have seen it a million times. Um, when I get it up and get the concrete set up and everything, and I'll do another video on setting up the, uh, uh, the mounting system up on top of it. And uh, Alright guys. Uh, if you like what you see, uh, you know, if you're a new subscriber, go ahead and subscribe. And if you look next to the subscribe button, there's like a little sun or a little star or something other. If you click on there and you want to keep up with more of our videos, which right now we're not getting out a lot of videos, but you'll be notified basically by email instantly um, when we uh, have a new video out. Uh, they'll get, send you an email. Uh, but anyway, just click on that little star or little sun or whatever it is next to the squat subscribe button and if you click on that they'll actually send you an email and you can keep updated when uh we have new videos out all right you guys have a great day